Doctor, thank you so much for just a few moments of your time here today. How significant is this gift from the Anderson Foundation? This is a, an enormous gift. We are, we are so fortunate uh, to partner with the Andersons to really improve access for proton patients in Minnesota and in the Midwest. Uh, since October of 2019, we have been at capacity at our proton facility. Uh, it's a four-room facility that treats about 1,200 patients a year. It's about a third of our practice. We still treat many patients with traditional x-rays, but it's really the most complicated, most serious, and often most sensitive, the youngest patients that are most sensitive to effects of radiation uh, that benefit from protons. So it's a, it's a highly sophisticated and complicated practice, uh, but as, as the only proton center in Minnesota and in much of the Midwest, um, we, we take care of the majority of, of, of serious and complex patients that need radiation in this facility. And we've been at capacity for a couple of years now. Cancer incidence is growing. You know, the, the, our numbers generally are increasing about seven to 10% per year of, of needing radiation. And we have not been able to keep up with the demand for, for proton therapy in our region. So this is an enormous gift and is why the Andersons felt so strongly about it uh, to really continue to provide the highest quality radiation care to Minnesotans and to uh, our patients in the Midwest. This is a very specific form of radiation therapy that's very, very precise. What kind of cancers are you using this tool for? That's what it's probably most well known for are pediatric tumors. Our youngest patients are the most sensitive to the effects of even very low doses of radiation. And this allows us to protect the normal tissues. It's a type of radiation that stops. You can dial it into a certain depth and then it stops. It doesn't go through you like a chest X-ray does or regular X-rays do. And so those regular x-rays as they go through a small child who's developing, their, their cells are still growing and developing and are sensitive to even those low doses. Uh, so we use it for all, basically all manners of pediatric uh, uh, tumors. And then from adults perspective, pretty much from head to toe, there are indications, but it's just more specific. It's a little bit more nuanced. For example, tumors that are very close to the eye nerves or to the spinal cord, where we can get high doses and have a, a sharp fall off to keep the eye nerves or the spinal cord safe. Same for tumors in the chest uh, when they're up against the heart, for example. So women with left-sided breast cancer that have tumors or lymph nodes near the heart, and we're trying to protect their heart and lungs because they actually are young and have a very good survival, uh, but we just wanna make sure that we, from a radiation perspective, don't do anything that could impact that survival long-term. Uh, we see similar types of situations in the pelvis when it's gonna be a, a tumor that will be up against bladder or rectum and you wanna prevent a second cancer in the future or or bleeding or all sorts of things like that. So there's many other types of tumors that benefit from it. And we have treated patients from three months to 90 years old, uh, but it just really depends on the specific situation. Doctor, how will this donation allow you to essentially double capacity at Mayo for this proton beam therapy? With the advances that have occurred in the technology, uh, allowing uh, the beam to be delivered faster, allowing the machine to rotate more quickly. We actually, even though we're only building two more rooms, uh, we can nearly double the capacity. So we currently have four, treating about 1,200 a year. This um, machine, this future machine has two rooms and we'll treat about 900 additional patients a year. Again, because of the improvements that have occurred, sophistication in the technology uh, that allows us to, to treat patients more comfortably, more quickly, less time on the table, uh, and, and more safely. So we're not just talking about uh, a building, because I know this, this grant will also help pay for a building, but you're buying a new machine too? Correct. This, the, the, um, the donation is primarily the capital um, donation for the new building, uh, but part of the project is a, a new machine. It'll be a, a new accelerator with two new rooms. Uh, and, and there's a reason for that. With protons, an accelerator has to funnel the little protons into each room. So we have one, currently we have one accelerator for four rooms. If we just added two rooms, two additional rooms uh, with the same accelerator, actually slow things down because the patients on the first four rooms are having to wait for the new rooms to be treated. And so really to have the most efficient um, treatment available as well as uh, accommodate the, the increasing needs that we have over the next few years, it, it does require a whole new machine to go in that building. The buildings will be connected though. So from a patient perspective, when they walk in, if they go to the right or the left, they're going to protons. Uh, but the, so the buildings will be very closely connected uh, from a patient experience perspective, but they are two distinct machines.
Now, where would this building be? I was just at your campus last week um, talking to another Mayo doc, and um, you're you're pretty compact down there right yes. now. Yes, <laughs> we're very compact. The new building will be located uh, where the, the colonial used to be. So the colonial building is coming down as we speak, and this will be connected to the Jacobson building, which is our current proton facility. So for a seamless patient experience, but it is it will be a new building, basically replacing that area where the colonial building has been. Mm -hmm. And these machines, uh, I, I recall from the Ken Burns documentary that they are not cheap. No, uh, they are they are very expensive machines, and which is why you can understand how in many smaller cancer centers throughout our region and rural areas, it really is not practical, uh, economically feasible uh, to run these kind of machines. You do have to have the patient volume enough of these serious and complex patients to really be able to to use the machine and make sure that that um, the investment is is getting. Um, it's full utilization. And so, yes, it is a very expensive machine. When will construction start? And when do you hope to start um, opening it up and, and adding to the capacity there? If you count the buildings coming down, which is happening now, construction is on construction is ongoing. Uh, we've had to, as part of this project, uh, there has to be some site preparation. So that is what's ongoing now. We hope that the building will be ready for beginning of occupancy and machine delivery in 2024. Uh, and the goal will be by end of 2026 or 2027, but hopefully 2026, be able to treat the first patients. All right. Dr. Nadia Locke from Mayo Clinic, thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me.